Hey folks, Jason, painfully on a stack. Today, I'm gonna do something that yesterday I said I wasn't gonna do, but I'm not gonna do it for the, the reasons that I think a, a lot of people do it. I've got some thoughts, I jotted them down, but mostly I just wanna talk about the journey that I, that I went through and the channel went through over the past year and hopefully give you guys some insight into, into some of the things that I struggled with, maybe that those things will help you with some of the things that you struggle with. As much as you try to be a student of YouTube, sometimes things just don't make any sense. And for a long time uh, this year, a lot of what I was doing on the channel didn't really make any sense. I, I was making videos and I was just sort of flailing about. Over the previous couple of years as the channel kind of grew really quickly i fell into this thing where i had i had a couple of different kinds of videos that did well got views drew subscribers but over time those videos started to uh, not really uh started to be more of a curse than a blessing because it fell into this cycle of of me really just like trying to to you know poke people's buttons and egg people on and and you know kind of to try and make people mad and it was fun for a while and then it stopped being fun and for me for me and and I just really kind of had a YouTube identity crisis I had a bunch of people who were helping me, who would give me advice, who would talk to me about stuff. And, and that was very valuable. But something that happened along the way is that as I became more successful, I stopped relying on myself and my own instincts, made a lot of decisions based on what other people were saying because I was afraid to take responsibility for what... I was doing or not doing. This past year on my YouTube channel is by far the worst year in terms of all the measurable stuff that you can measure. The worst year that I've had on YouTube since, you know, I started YouTube. The wheels fell off in 2020 to a certain degree. The videos that I was doing just weren't working as well. Having success at this kind of thing is what I've been working toward my whole life. If you don't know my background, I, I was a musician for a long time. I mean, basically since I was like 14 until I was in my mid thirties, I, I, I worked as a musician, you know, not professionally, professionally, but semi-professionally. When I stepped away from that, I went to graduate school for creative writing and got an MFA in creative writing here at Iowa. And, um, and I wrote a novel. I have written... Anyway, I've done a lot of different things. And one thing that I discovered about myself this year that I that I really, I guess, grabbed onto this year. I never wanted to wait around to see if anyone would approve of what I was doing, quote unquote, because I was afraid that they wouldn't. But with YouTube, there are no gatekeepers per se. Uh, the, the ultimate gatekeepers are the people in the audience who, who watch your videos, you people out there who are part of the community. But I, I, I didn't trust myself. I, I tried to get other people to tell me what to do. I signed up for YouTube guru courses that were too expensive and valuable, but yet not, not valuable enough to, to make up for the time and effort and money that I spent on them. I, I don't have anything against people who do YouTube guru type stuff. There's a lot that you can learn from those people, but... You should do it and in place where you're learning in the sense of you're taking in knowledge and you're applying it. I was looking for a savior. And I don't know if I needed a savior or not, but that's that's kind of what I was looking for. And ultimately, as things like that go, it didn't really change the status quo. I did learn a lot from a lot of different people, but it didn't change the status quo. And honestly, if I would have taken the time that I put into that and put that time into making more videos, I went into it for the wrong reasons. And so the channel was kind of down for the first six to eight months of the year, maybe even yeah, around September, it started to pick back up again. And I guess the only thing that I can think of 
uh, that helped is that I stopped asking people for help. I realized that I had to take ownership for what I was doing, that nobody else was going to be able to quick fix or, you know, solve my problems or help me figure this out in the end. I, I, so I just decided that I had to figure it out. I would love to have found that like, once I got to a certain place, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't have self doubt or anything like that, but I did. And finally it sort of caught up with me in the early part of 2020. I didn't want to just have a channel where my only goal was to sort of like be the the shock guy uh, or or just make people mad or, or whatever whatever it is that I was doing. I wanted to have an honest conversation. I wanted to challenge people's ideas about things. I wanted to challenge my own ideas about things. And thankfully, I was able to do that in the last, you know, three to four months of the year. And, and I'm happy with the direction that the channel is going right now. Things I didn't anticipate throughout 2020, and this had been the case in the years before, this has been the case for me all the time. And there are reasons for it. I, not, I'm going to get a little person. I was adopted when I was an infant. Uh, my parents split up when I was uh, pretty young. My dad was, you know, an alcoholic. I've struggled with alcohol. There's a lot in my past that has, you know, I, I came from West Virginia. I came from not very much money. I, you know, have done really well with the things that I've done over the course of the years. I have taken myself from one place to someplace entirely different, but I still struggled with and probably continue to struggle with on some level, uh, imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is like when you're someplace doing something, but yet you don't feel like you belong there. You don't feel like you deserve it. You don't feel like uh, it's for real and that it's going to stay as it is or continue to grow. And I've dealt with that quite a bit over the years. And, and this year was the year where imposter syndrome uh, really, I, I really had to face it. This year, I really had to figure out what it was and why it was I was feeling the way that I was. Why was I so scared that YouTube and, and the audience and the views and all that kind of stuff would disappear and I would be, I, I don't know. I finally started to make some headway with imposter syndrome. I finally said to myself vis-a-vis -vis YouTube that I was just going to make the videos that I felt like I wanted to make and not overthinking it or vacillating back and forth or procrastinating or any of those kinds of things. It helped that I'd been through the other creative ventures that I'd been through in the sense that I knew what it takes to be successful. And by successful, I mean like to complete work that you feel good about. Uh, anything that comes after that is, is great, but successful creativity is the act of creation, not the secondary stuff that comes after. I wasn't letting myself do the first thing because I was so concerned with the other thing. I was so concerned with what was going to happen uh, after I did the work that I wasn't giving myself the opportunity to really do the work. And so I just started with what I knew already from those different ventures that the only thing that you have control over when you are being a creative person or any person, but in creativity, especially because there are so many different landmines of, of self doubt and that kind of thing. The only thing that you can control is sitting down and doing the work. It's sort of a really Zen kind of thing where you do the work with faith only in the fact that you're doing the work. You're not considering... Uh, the, the life of a writer is very different than the life of a musician. A musician writes songs or learns songs and gets up on stage and plays them and gets an immediate uh, feedback on whether they did a good job. Or, you know, and then if nobody shows up to the gigs, then you get all kinds of self-doubty. It's a very like immediate sort of dopamine hit that you get when you're a musician that uh, isn't there when you're a writer. A writer does like 
<laughs> most everything that goes into being a writer happens when the writer is alone in a room. And if, if you can get yourself to the place where you can be alone in the room and do the thing that you're there to do, and you can do that day after day after day after day, then what comes later is you finish a book or whatever it is that you're writing and it goes out into the world. Once it goes out into the world, you don't have any control over what people think about it, how people react to it. So I need to take that lesson and apply it to YouTube a little bit more. I got to the place where I realized that doing the work was the thing that was going to help me get to where I wanted to go. And I knew that I could do the work. And as I did the work more, I would get better at it. And I would understand what I needed to do more. And I would grow and the channel would change and things would continue to evolve. When you get into that self-doubt imposter syndrome place, part of you starts to try and convince yourself not to do the work because why would you do that? Nobody wants it. You're just here by some accident or what, whatever it is that goes on in the head of the person who is, is experiencing that. I was afraid that, you know, this whole thing had just been a dream or something or that, you know, YouTube would, would, you know, disappear. Some, some quirk of the algorithm would bury me in, in the dirt and I'd never rise again. I was afraid of failure. At times this year, I thought I might have failed. I thought that maybe I had taken the channel to a place where it wasn't going to come, come back and I wasn't going to, you know, continue to build the community and yeah, all that kind of stuff. I was, I was afraid that I had screwed it up. There were several times where I said, maybe I should just quit. This was me in a place where I either had to take responsibility for what it was that I was doing, stop looking for other people to tell me everything was okay and that this was a good idea or that was a good idea and do the work, just do the work. I guess what I want to say is that if you're making YouTube videos, if you're, you know, selling caftans on Etsy, if you're, you know, do, doing whatever that's a creative thing, anything that you do as a creator, you have to sort of play that game, that Zen koan sort of gateless gate game where you do the work and you are able to separate the work from the product of the work, the product being everything that happens after the work is done. You don't look at those numbers and, and ask for them to tell you how valuable you are. I'm finally happy with the videos that I'm making on the channel. I don't feel like I'm, I'm being something that I'm not in real life. Uh, whereas that might not have been the case in years before this year, I'm just going to believe in the work. I'm going to believe in what I'm doing and that it has value no matter what it is that happens after the fact. And I'm going to appreciate you folks out there who have invested time and some of you, those of you who have become members or something like that invested, invested in the channel. All of you people mean a great deal to me. I really value the conversations that we have in, during live streams or in the comments or any place else. I'm, in a, I'm a very fortunate person. And I'm going to appreciate that more this year and allow myself to do the work that I love to do without all the baggage of whether or not I have the right to do it. Thanks for being here, folks. Thanks for listening to this somewhat rambly, but off the, off the top of my head <laughs> uh, discussion of what I learned in 2020. Uh, maybe not like a... Yeah, what I learned in 2020. We'll just call it that. And with that, we will end this video. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Jason. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I am out.